Lord, glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the word world firm not to be moved. He governs the peoples with equity. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds <clears throat> to all the nations. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor and to proclaim liberty to captives. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord Jesus appointed 72 other disciples whom he sent ahead of him in, in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but labors are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his pay. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God is at hand for you. The Gospel of the Lord. We celebrate the memorial of two great early uh, bishops, and we hear their accounts of even their ordination, I think, by Paul in the scriptures themselves. And the apostles are ones, the bishops, the apostles are those who have been sent. And so our bishops today act in that capacity. So God has chosen these men to go forward and proclaim the good news. And actually, if you've ever seen the consecration of a bishop, they take the book of the Gospels and place it on the bishop's head and basically say, you're willing to die for this, right? And he is to say, yeah, I am. And that really is at the essence of our faith. The kingdom that Christ has come to establish is not a worldly kingdom. It's not an earthly kingdom because no earthly kingdom will endure forever. In about four billion years, our sun will be toast and there won't be any living beings on the earth anymore. Now, maybe technologically by that time, if society and humanity doesn't destroy themselves by that time, um, they may be on other planets or other solar systems. The technology will probably be there. In my own mind, I kind of just wonder why would God create all these wonderful distant galaxies and planets if we couldn't get there someday. So, but the idea is that what really matters most is our relationship with Jesus and that invitation not only to have a relationship with Christ but actually to be one with him. He prays in his last prayer, he says, Father, I pray that they may be one in me as I am one in you. So many in our world are striving to manipulate things, gain power and control. To what end? It will gain them nothing in the end. But for us who understand who Christ is and what that's about, we are called and tasked with helping others recognize what is the truth. 
it's faith. There's no really proving it in a scientific way any more than you can prove someone loves you. You can't prove that. There's certainly a lot of evidence maybe that could point to that reality. But in the end, some people could just be putting on a nice show. But the truth doesn't depend on what we believe or what we think. The truth is what it is. And is Jesus Christ, the second person, the Most Holy Trinity, who came, who became one of us, delivered us from sin and oppression so that we might make our world a better place and that we might have hope no matter how desperate things seem to be. You hear, and if you've studied history and you see what Christians had to suffer through communistic regimes and the torture that they endured just because these leaders saw Christianity as not true and saw it as a damaging thing because if you put your faith in Christ that's more important than them and that's why they see Christ as such an enemy so my friends let us pray that we can be inspired by these these Timothy and Titus and that we too might be inspired to to preach the truth in good times and bad to try and help the world recognize just how much they're valued by God and how we in turn might help them discover this Jesus who is our only hope for salvation and it is his kingdom a kingdom of peace and love joy truth justice all these things that we bring into reality when we treat others with love peace justice truth goodness beauty that kingdom of God is in our midst when we recognize who we are and who the person is that we're, conf that we're engaging with at the moment. This is the kingdom of God, and we're all living stones, hopefully, and hopefully becoming more and more transparent and, more and more vis make more and more visible this mystical body of Christ through our union with Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray for the church, that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples. We pray to the Lord. For all nations throughout the world, that they may know and serve the common good and not be motivated by greed and self-interest, we pray to the Lord. We pray for George Metz, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all those who are suffering with COVID, those in the hospital, those who are struggling even at home, who are filled with fear, that God may console them with his loving presence, we pray to the Lord. For more vocations to the priesthood, religious life, faith-filled marriages, and the dedicated single life, we pray to the Lord. Lord that all corruption in our world be uncovered and those responsible for it lose their power or be replaced by it, or be converted so that we can have leaders that respect life, religious liberty, and all that's in accord with natural law, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become the, bre uh, <coughs> the bread of life. 